Friedman from Goldsmiths, the University of London, um, and we're going to talk about his talk today. Okay. Um, so the first question is, do you want to tell us a bit about your background? Um, well, I was in TV news for a bit and uh, went into academia in the, in the 90s and I've always been interested in media policy, media regulation and more recently media power and I think what happened around phone hacking mm. uh, and the Leveson uh, inquiry just made me even more interested but not just as an academic also I helped to start a group called the Media Reform Coalition and we've been campaigning since um, the phone hacking crisis for uh, changes to uh, our media regime, so that is for controls on um, ownership, for more ethical forms of journalism, for new funding regimes to support public interest journalism. So I see myself, wherever I can, as both an academic and a researcher into media policy and regulation, but also as a media activist. Mm -hmm. And so how have those themes fed into your talk today? Well, the talk today is about two things. One is just trying to make sense of media power. Uh, it's a, it's quite a complex term, but it's something that we kind of just refer to now. And I think, again, since phone hacking, people talk about the abuse of media power. Um, but the second half of this is about social media, that they've given us a new kind of power. And often, lots of people, for very good reasons, think that this is quite an a emancipatory, progressive form of power, because I won't be told by governments or bureaucracies what to do. I can now blog, I can wiki, I can do lots of things. And it's as if somehow, we're able to free ourselves from the constraints of the traditional legacy media power to do these new sorts of things, to tell new sorts of stories, to represent new communities and so on. And my talk is not dismissing that, but trying to say that we need to understand those developments in relation to an understanding of capitalism, that it is contradictory, that it provides us with fantastic opportunities, but also claws them back because the heart of capitalism, there is this fundamental contradiction between uh, its, its uh, um, public or, um, good, public organisation, and the way in which it's actually organised for private profit. And that, for me, inflects lots of things, not least social media. Um, so how do you think this dynamic with social media and power is relevant to young people today? Well, it's relevant to everyone. I guess it's relevant to, to, to young people because it's their, the bread and butter, increasingly their commutative experience. So all I would want to say is to make them aware, first of all, that there's a history, that, this, that these kinds of debates around power, the abuse of power, and the uh, relationship between wider forms of power and you know, media behaviour, you know, it's worth having a kind of long view of all of this. But secondly, it's just to ask, is to encourage everybody, young people uh, included, some fundamental questions about their own media behaviour. Um, are you free to do what you want? You know, we have a free media system, but does that mean it escapes from all kinds of power relations? It doesn't matter about uh, gender, ethnicity, or age, or sexuality. There are all sorts of dimensions of power that are very important to the way in which we communicate. And I just think that, you know, to ask those questions of social media um, is, I'm sure many people are doing it already. They don't need me to tell them that, but actually it's just something that I think academics should be trying to challenge many of the, the, the quite ridiculously optimistic stories that are being told about new media and its emancipatory potential. Well, thank you very much for uh, answering our questions and for coming to talk to us today. Pleasure.